Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And just a reminder, you can always find my home base at wedontdie.com. We've got medium classes. We've got a free Sunday gathering with medium demonstrations. You can find now over 600 hours of my two podcasts two podcasts. We have We Don't Die Radio, and then also my show on iHeartRadio, which is called Shades of the Afterlife with now, wow, over 170 episodes. This show, I'm talking one-on-one with a special guest like you'll meet today. And on that show, I am a reporter in on the afterlife. So while there are some bits of interviews, a lot of it is me reporting in on the latest in science and medicine and near-death experiences and and so much more. So you can find that also on your favorite podcast app. Just type in Shades of the Afterlife. Our guest today is Mary Beth Decker. She is a retired naval officer turned animal communicator, medical intuitive, and energy healer. She's the founder of sacredgrove.com, where people and pets heal and connect. She works with people who dearly love their animals, yet face tough issues addressing animals' physical, emotional, and behavioral issues. Mary Beth is also the author of the best-selling book called Peace in Passing, Comfort for Loving Humans During Animal Transitions. Today, we'll find out more about Mary Beth, talk about our oh-so-beloved pets, get some help through grief, and perhaps hear some stories of why she believes in the afterlife. Mary Beth, a warm welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Oh, Sandra, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be with you and getting to talk about this topic. So thanks. You're welcome. It's so nice for me to meet new people. It really is. There's so many incredible men and women that are doing some just wonderful things to help serve humanity and wanted to say, I don't know what you call the animal kingdom, maybe just the animal kingdom, because so many of us, we love our people, but we've got that special relationship with animals. So I want to turn it over to you. Find out about you. Before we started, you telling me a little bit about your naval training. Talk to us how a naval officer goes into animal communication. So just tell us a little bit about Mary Beth, if you would. All right. (laughs) A long and winding road, let's put it that way. I think it's this is a group of people who might understand that when my grandmother took me to the Spiritualist Center in Lilydale, she had me drive her there so she could check in with her husband, with grandpa. Uh, When I was either, I think it was high school or college, we went down there. And um, so on my dad's side, I've already had stories of, um, as my grandmother says, she's her husband, Grandpa, went out to hang out with his buddies. And he says, I'll see you later. And he never came back because he had a, a brain aneurysm and he passed away right then. And she said she was sitting in his his favorite chair, and I, I can picture it, and dozing off. And she opens her eyes and he's standing in front of her. And she says, what are you doing here? You're dead. <laughs> and he disappears. And she says, I should have just kept my mouth shut. So those are the st- those are one of the stories I grew up with. But I I joined the Navy as honestly as a way to see the world and get out and do some really cool things. I loved it. I made a good decision. And after I retired and I was doing energy healing for people, my deceased dogs started communicating with me. So I was astounded. I just didn't expect, I didn't expect that. <laughs> I just didn't expect that. And my dog, Timmy, came to me as a full body guy. It was like he was sitting in the dining room. And I got to say, Timmy, one ear up, one ear down, that little sweet Hawaiian toy dog, grinning from ear to ear. And I looked and I said, Timmy, and he disappeared. But I knew when he survived death, I was like, oh, I can deal with that. Chewy was happy. He he was a happy looking boy. And the other part was like, he came back to tell me. He didn't say the words, but hey, I'm alive and well. I'm good. I wanted to say hi. And I was just astounded. 
Um, Can I ask Mary Beth how yes. going from the Navy and retiring, you dipped your toes in the water of energy healing. Now I know your grandmother had that experience with your grandfather and you dropped her off at Lilydale. Have you, you always believed in something more and did you, what called you into looking into energy healing? Is there more spirituality? And then we definitely want to get more into the animals, but okay. Well, part of your journey that I was sacred grove is part of my story. And I didn't even realize why I named my place sacred grove for a few years, but I was about 12 or 13 and I was in the, uh, had a lot of religious stuff and I was in the woods and I said, God, do you really exist? I'm like, yeah, I just want to know. I, I'm being pushed hard. I'm okay with it either way, but I just need to know. And I had a spiritual experience where creator spirit was there. And then it was as if it was if, if they, God pulled it, his presence. And I don't, I'm sorry, I don't mean his because it didn't have a masculine or feminine quality. The presence out of my sense of the world and it was like somebody had taken the accident out of the world and then it came all back and I said oh yeah you exist I can feel it comforting intelligent took the kind to like connect with some 12 year old from Buffalo New York come on and um that was profound for me I, I can't tell you that I had a lot of other experiences but that shifted me over into like well a lot's possible. You know, if this happened, other things are certainly possible. And, and then my grandmother's stories and my dad's stories about my grandfather stuck with me. I think I became better at listening to prompts and getting into the energy healing was something that was just, uh, I said a yes. And I believe that there was, for me, a shifting of my energy well, they would say your vibration, where I got to pick more things up uh, or, or be more aware, is that a way to say it, of stuff that was probably always around, but I just hadn't noticed it. And were you trained for energy healing? Yes, yes. I started out, I became a Reiki master, and then I trained with quantum touch. Uh, my friend Psychic Bob said, I don't know what quantum touch is, Mary Beth, but you're supposed to go learn it. I said, okay. Okay, Bob. And so, yeah, I, I did a lot of training. I started out doing healing for people. And, and then when dogs came along and I kept getting communications with my dogs, my friend said, yeah, that's, that's animal communication. I'm like, really, Mary? And she says, yeah, it's a thing. And I got training in animal communication. It's a thing. It certainly is a thing. <laughs> it certainly is. So your first experience was with a dog that passed. Yeah. And then you got training because there's pets that have passed. There's pets that are living and there's the whole world. There is. Yeah. Were and you I, able and to? I had another dog that came through. My dog, Eddie, the, the children mm -hmm. named her. So it's not my fault. She's a dog called Eddie. But she passed just before I had to go on a business trip because I was in an association and those of us who love our animals as much as I do, you know, that is the last thing you want to do is to go stand up in front of people with your grin, say, here, let me give you the agenda to the meeting. And I felt her presence with me on the plane. I did not see her. But she came and she stayed with me like that night in the hotel room. And I had a day before I had to be on. And she just stayed and comforted me. That's when you know your, your dogs love you. Your animals really care for you. Yeah. There are many people who have experienced the death of a loved one, and it, the grief is torturous. And I know that most often it's my experience with the pets that I've had that they have this unconditional love and they sneak into a place into my heart that no human's ever gotten to. So if you're not a pet lover, you may not relate to this. If you 
have had beloved pets, you know exactly what I'm saying, is the grief can sometimes be just as bad, if not worse sometimes when your special friend passes. And so we want to know that they're alive. We want to have that comfort through grief. And we want that comfort that we're going to see them again, which I 100, 200% believe we will. Well, I do. I do. So what do you think about that as far as grieving the loss of a pet and then knowing that they're around? Have you done healing and then you've worked with people and you've been able to give them evidence of their pets? Yes. And then they've shared evidence as well. Mine are usually stories. I help them before the transition because people want to know if they're making the right decision, if if they're thinking about letting them go. I mean, what a burden, you know. Awful, awful decision. And it seems like we we have our grief, and then on top of that, did we wait too long? Did we do it too early, and they're, like, mad at us, or, you know, they're carrying grudges in the afterlife? And so I've helped people understand what kind of physical or mental capacity they have to enjoy life, just giving them assurances or assurances that they're not ready yet, which either way, that's a good thing because, you know, you want to ease people's minds. And so even afterwards, getting back to your question, they have uh, told me, I've asked them, how are you going to show up? And they'll give me an idea. And sometimes it's exactly the way I said, and sometimes some a new they come through a different way. But a lot of people have stories. Of course, I had my own. I just told you the best one that comes to mind was Harry. He's a corgi. I was thinking, now what is the Queen Elizabeth's dogs always? They're always corgis. So it was corgis. a little corgi Harry, and he had a long name that that some royal would have picked out for him. And I said, you're going to think this is nuts, but he's playing with the water bowl. Because when he told me that, or he showed me that, I said, you're not playing with the food bowl? He says, no, I'm playing with the water bowl. And, and his person went back, he says, yeah, there's been a big mess around the water bowl. And she says, "My, I do have other dogs, but they do not make that kind of mess. Harry was the only guy who made a big mess at the water bowl. He was just a slob. I'm like, okay. <laughs> It's, he's, he's letting you know. He's letting you know. And there's been so many different ways our animals have come through. And people have told me those stories and loved them. Uh, I wrote a blog that we posted last week from one of my clients. And she lost her English bulldog very suddenly. And suddenly has got to be the worst, I think. And she was taking her other bulldog out. And she says, look, guy, if if you're around and you know you're around, give me a couple signs. And she looks up from her car on the and the bumper sticker in the car in front of her is the picture of a, a bulldog with angel wings on each side and then two happy smiles. And it was just like right after she asked him. And she said, if that wasn't enough, Mary Beth, Then I went to my favorite gas station, been there thousands of times, and there's a a food truck out there with with the whole side was just uh, pictures of hamburgers and fries, which were his favorite little snackies. She says, no, I didn't feed them all the time. I don't want people to think I've been a bad dog mom. But that was also, and she said, I'd never seen that food truck before. And I've been at that place a huge number of times. So he gave her, he just sent her two big, I'm fine, mom, ways. It was just lovely. She's so happy. We have to pay attention. We do. do. We have to pay attention because I don't know. I'm sure there are ways that loved ones can do things with the electricity or with the television, those kind of things. But I think other times it's just pointing your eyes just at the right time, at the right place. So there's so many stories of those kinds of signs. And we do need to be in the present moment to see them, though. Not up in our head. 
I'm not too busy. I know. Yeah. The other thing is that gets in people's way is they think, oh, I just made that up because I wanted to sign. And so would you just throw that away? I say, my kind of answer to that is, look, they did whatever they had to do to come through. Why don't you just believe them and say, thank you? That, that'll take you to a much better place than worrying about whether you made that up in your mind or you didn't really see what you saw or felt what you felt. I, I spoke I spoke to a guest a few episodes ago and she said take away the word just like just my imagination because they work through that and that's how we perceive information so take away just she says keep a journal and the more you see repetitive things you start thinking hey that's not coming out of my head I want to just share one quick story because we're talking about animals. Please. Not too long ago, I interviewed Diane Calderon, whose son is now in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. And her sign with him was bluebirds, you know? And she says, I never saw bluebirds where I lived. And all of a sudden, bluebirds. That was one of a couple of signs. Well, I live in a place that there are bluebirds somewhere, right? But they don't come to mm -hmm. my bird feeders because I've got nothing that they like, right? They like the worms and stuff. So I've lived in this house for four years with the same bird feeders. And I look at them every morning. And the day after airing Diane's episode, seven, eight, nine bluebirds showed up. Oh. And I would have noticed them had they come before. They came for a second day, and then I haven't seen them since. So can I say, well, of course I can say bluebird. I can make up a human reason that happened. But I'm taking it as a sign from her son saying, thanks for interviewing my mom and telling our story. Oh, that yeah. empowers me to keep my eyes open and see what else I can see. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Yes. And, and a lot of times, oh, I just love that story. They'll come to us in their in our dreams, I, I, and there's a difference in dreams that are from our loved ones. It's a real experience, and I think if you notice, if you're a dreamer, because I've been doing dreams stuff since the mid '90s of just what is dream work and what does it mean. There's a difference in when they when somebody comes into your life, into your dream. And it's them rather than just, you know, they're playing a part in your dream and what does it mean? And I think you pay attention, you'll notice that that was something real that happened, even though you were asleep. You can feel it. You I can. think those dreams tend to last. They tend to have that lingering memory of love. I know how crazy our subconscious can be. So if there's negative things, that's us. But those feelings of love, those dreams that last, they seem clearer than other dreams. And it's nice to hear that the pets come through as well. I have to tell you, I had the most extraordinary experience back in the fall of 22. I lost two of my dogs and my two dogs and one of my cats. I had three cats and two dogs at the time within five weeks of each other. And it was, I, the, the grief was, it was pretty unbearable. And somewhere along the way, I had a picture, I had a dream that the two dogs who had passed, plus a third dog who passed, who had been the older brother so of Stella. So I had Tibor and Stella who had passed in 22. And then Mitsubishi, that great guy who passed and been and Stella's big brother were running around together with me. And there were a bunch of dogs running in this place. And they were like around, it felt like a medical center where the dogs were being taken care of. And all of a sudden the fourth dog came and started running with them. Well, that's weird. And it turns out when we started looking for our next dog. The guy that we got look, looks exactly like the fourth dog that showed up in our dream. <laughs> so if you ever think your dog's picked one out, picked out your next dog, you're probably not wrong. <laughs> it was amazing. That's so sweet. 
Yeah. And we let's talk just a little bit about grief. What um, would you say to someone who is, and I know you just have that blog post that people can go to your website, sacredgrove.com and find that. But what would you say? Because it's honoring their grief, whether it's a human or four-legged or feathered friend, it's real. Yeah, it is real. I think from my experience, allowing yourself to grieve um, and know that it's really not logical. To me, the experience of grief, it doesn't have this like, oh, it just goes downhill and all of a sudden you're in a wonderful place again. It's like up, down, up, down. And it also, it's pretty strong. It's like it shows up in the most unexpected time and place and it hijacks you. And I think I want to say that's super normal and there's nothing wrong with it. You have a memory, you see a bed um, they used to sleep in, you go out walking and you're not walking any dog anymore. <laughs> and you're like, what's the point? Or any, there's some, there's so many triggers and, and you just let it come and you, you feel the grief. Please do it. Just let it come through. Uh, and then find a good memory. Find something that makes you happy and, and hold on to that for a while. That's what got me through telling stories who, to people who will listen about, you know, the fun stuff. My husband and I are still doing the remember this, remember that. And I think I touched on it before. I got to say one more thing. Please don't waste time if possible on feeling like you let them go too soon or you kept them too long. Even if it's from a logical standpoint, my experience of checking in with the animals, the only thing they bring with them is the love that you two have. They don't bring grudges. Generally, I have not found grudges or sad. No, it's they miss they, they somehow sometimes do miss being in their physical bodies, but they're not disconnected from us the way we feel disconnected from them. So please don't feel the guilt and let it go. You, yeah. you spoke about grief hijacking you. I thought I have not heard that word compared to grooming with grief and holy cow it's exactly what happens when you least expect it it takes over it's brutal it is. Uh, and then you said find a happy memory i know from a lot of training and education and things that the more we think a thought the more we create a neural pathway it'll keep thinking itself it'll keep showing up whether it's guilt or whatever so we need to even hijack our thoughts, right? So it's important, I know, not to stuff grief down, what we resist persists to have that experience. Mm -hmm. But when it fades, you can just put in that happy memory or even before it fades. Wow, I personally think whether it's a human loved one or a pet, thinking those feelings and that opens a doorway to our communication with them that it's they know awesome. we're yeah i mean they're always with us i think the pets probably are too they've got a couple of paws in the afterlife and a couple of paws <laughs> on our side you know that we can multitask but to have those memories not only does it make us feel better but then in those quiet moments sometimes they put the thoughts in our mind that seem to come out of nowhere remember this they mom do. remember this they do they do and i have also uh, and they'll, you'll just if you're like me, I'll be walking my two new dogs and I'll feel like, oh, I think I've just been joined by Stella and T and we're just, it's a force of walking. And I just say, okay, I'm good with it. And uh, don't know where that came from, but that I work, I'll take it. You know, it's, it's fun. There's some people, Mary Beth, that feel mm -hmm. they can't get another pet or they're not paying honor to their deceased pet to have another and it's not my feeling. I think everybody deserves love and you get love, you give love, you get love. Could you talk a little bit about that? Is it ever too soon to get another pet? 
That's a really great question. I actually talk about that in my book. I think if you are getting another pet to with the hopes that they will have the same personality of who you just lost, it's too soon. I know somebody in the family who had a wonderful pit bull, good, good girl. And he went and he got someone very similar looking and their personalities weren't the same. And so there was a lot of comparison, like, oh, the new one doesn't do like this one. And so, yeah, you probably should wait. (laughs) But we're talking about Mitsubishi again. I had a conversation with him after he passed. And I said, I wasn't, I'm not, I wasn't ready for you to leave Mitsu. Why did you leave? He said, honestly, and he got a little stern with me. He said, there's another one who needs you. It's like, you know, put your big girl panties on. There's another one who needs you. And then I found Tibor, who was probably a bait dog for some dog fighting stuff. He's one of those who may not have found a family. And he came in and he was willing to let go of a lot of great, a lot of tough behaviors and even get along with the cats. And uh, they're like, oh, you're right. And what a gift Tibor was for my life. So wait until you can do it. But please think about it again. There's yeah. so many good. And they'll find you and you'll find them. I think it'll be the right combination. They definitely have their own personalities, don't they? Oh, Oh, my goodness. Just like people. Just like people. You expect a new spouse to be the same. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, no. Talk to me or us about what you think the afterlife is for pets. Are they catching butterflies? Is there the rainbow bridge that we cross and they'll be there for us? I have my own beliefs, but what do you say about that? Okay. I... I'm still gathering information, if you can say it that way. I think some of them go across the Rainbow Bridge. Some of them, Mitsubishi, my guy, he was extraordinary because I got the feeling that he was actually some kind of um, special being. You might call them angels because he says, I'm not coming back. I've had it. I did the dog thing. I came to you after your first husband died and I'll be there for you. So I'm not sure he's doing the dog thing anymore, but he's still around. There's others that have, it felt like they were taking on some jobs, not because somebody said, you got to do something useful, but there was a female dog who was, as I understand it, she was bred so they could sell her puppies. And so she didn't really get to be a mother. And on the other side, she was welcoming the puppies that didn't make it to adulthood and like finishing the mothering up. That was one of the things that I felt like. And there was another guy who I turned out later, his mom had psychic abilities and he was helping her kind of find people. Those are a few stories that made me just figure out that there's some choices there for them that are much wider than just playing. So I'll stop and say that. I do think you're right about the angels. I have had plenty of experience with pets and certain things happening at just the right time. And even with my cat, Millie, I wrote my whole book, We Don't Die, with her head on my laptop while I was trying to type. And when the book was set to be published, I had to read it one last time just to check for typos, errors, and things. And it was within a couple of days that my aunt and I, we had a house together, we had to make that decision because Millie was very sick and we made that decision we didn't want to make and it was brutal. So there I was grief stricken and I had to read my book one more time before it went to print. It's the last thing I wanted to do, Mary Beth. Oh, But when I did, can I tell you how much I was lifted? Not only do I talk about reasons to believe in the afterlife, but I talk about grief and my thoughts of what it's all about and how to have a powerful life. 
And I thought, Millie, you went just at the right time because I got to see the value in the transformation in the words within the book to someone who's grieving. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I, I knew, I like, you're my little angel, you know, and they say God spelled backwards is dog, right? <laughs> right. And there is that intelligence there and how much intelligence we'll know someday. Um, yeah. But don't discount it. I didn't know about your first husband. I'm sorry yeah. about that. But I know we go on. I know it's also a heck of a lot of grief. Has he come through in any way? Um, <laughs> yes, in was. Last year uh, was the 20th, 25th anniversary of his death, July 7th. And we had the greatest experience. It's like we finished our <laughs> couples counseling 25 years later. We forgave each other for all the stuff that didn't go quite well. And and we also apologized for all the stuff. It was pretty lovely. Uh, I don't think it felt like 25 years for him. That's most recent. When he passed away, the kids were in grade school. And I remember him, I say, I was saying to him, you don't get to stop being a dad just because you passed away. You better watch out for them. And I, I actually, when, when my son was in high school, I, I got the sense that Winston was gently pulling him back from some situations that could have really turned bad because everybody, oh, let's say most of us, get close to or make some bad decisions in high school and uh, just kept him from that. And uh, I was so grateful for that. And um, so I think he's been around off and on probably more than I've realized. Let me say that. It's been great. No, oh, thank you. Yeah. It's tough. I think we're all these divine souls having a human experience, even our critters, our pets. And to have that love, and I'm a big fan of adopting animals. Well, you save them, and guess what happens? They save you, don't they? Truly, truly. What you say about loving animals, uh, that was kind of my joke. I, I work with people who love their animals as much as, and in parentheses, or more than some of the people in their lives because they don't generally hold, they don't generally hold grudges and um, keep score about who did what to whom. <laughs> there might be anxiety and there might be fear, but and there might be protecting themselves based on what has happened to them in the past, but it doesn't go to the level that we humans can take it about. You know, you did something to me 20 years ago, and I still haven't forgotten giving you for that. That stuff's not usually in our relationship with the animals. And it's why we get so attached when we realize that, I think. If only we could look through the eyes of our loved ones, like our, I'll say dog, because cats can be so finicky, can't they? It's all about them sometimes. But I know with the dogs that I've had, it's just that unconditional love. If we can look at our loved ones that way, could you imagine how life would be? Yeah. 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 And I, I got to say, I, I, I've been in defense of cats. I certainly love them. And I know that they they definitely decide how they want to be treated. But I I feel their love. It's not expressed the same way as dogs but I, I do feel their love. <laughs> oh, I agree. And there's a whole world oh, of other pets that way. Yeah, absolutely. I just know that they have big personalities sometimes. They do. For those that have pets now, can we talk a little bit about communication? Yeah. Can they hear our thoughts? Can they read our, well, I think they can read our body language, but how should we be with our pets now? Like they're living, breathing, thinking, little beings that can understand us? Yes, that's perfect. I believe so. It starts with our energy because our thoughts and our feelings are vibrations. I think a quantum physics, quantum mechanics is teaching us that we're, everything's energy, including our thoughts. And when you, if you want to take the scientific 
grow. You can start thinking of thoughts as energy that goes out. And I do think that all of us are equipped to receive thoughts and feelings and things like that. But I believe our animals are already doing it. So they're picking up our thoughts in some way. They're picking up our emotions. They're reading us, not just our nonverbs. It's a great book that was written a while ago, Dogs That Know When Their Owners, I like to use humans or guardians, are coming home. But he actually did a study. There were certain dogs and cats and even parrots that they could tell by their behavior, the person at home was writing down when they would start to act a certain way, that the person at work was on their way home. And that person at work would write it down too. And they started verifying that this was real. And I also met a dog whose person said, oh, he's kind of dumb. And I heard the dog saying, hey, I'm not dumb. Funny. Be careful what you think or say. They are listening. So that's where I'll start. Yes, you definitely can communicate. Um, My aunt has Harry, who's a beautiful black and white kitty. And I've lived between that house with her and where I'm with my mom. And I remember seeing Harry get all excited, right? And my aunt didn't come home the same exact time every day. It wasn't that. But she had to be a mile away. Yeah. And he'd rush to the window and just wait. And then he'd start meowing really loud. And I'm thinking, he can't know that she's close. And then I just stand there. And about a minute later, I see her car pull around and come into the driveway. They have such a special relationship, but there's no question that he knew. And it was, it's so cool to watch that. It truly is. Thank you for that confirmation. I finally, it's so embarrassing because I read the book, but I finally figured out that's why my black cat shadow is sitting on the rug facing the door because he knows when the, the dogs in there are coming back for our walk and he's there waiting for us. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, why would you do that? Because they always run, like run you over as they run inside the house, but he wants to be there greeting them. You know, it's just so cute. Mary Beth, tell us about a little bit more about your book and what services you provide these days for people and you know, okay. what people can find on your website, sacredgrove.com. Well, let's see, I'll start with services and then we'll go to the book. When there are physical, emotional, I'm going to say it, the emotional issues like anxiety or behavioral issues, I work with people to check in with their animals and find out what's where, what's going on, what's the cause. And then through using my other abilities, which I have practiced a lot, medical intuition and healing, we'll do some work to see if it can shift the behaviors, do some healing, physical healing, if that feels like it, help them lose their anxiety because there's a lot of separation anxiety out there there's also a lot of cats not using the litter box which is something we work on and so also end of life when you don't when you don't know if your animal's still having fun still enjoying life you get some good reads from the veterinarian about what the diagnosis is but sometimes you want to hear from the from your animal, like, where is it hurting? How bad is it? Which I've heard them say is like, yeah, stuff hurts, but I'm old. Like, I, I can handle this. And the other one's saying, this is really hard. This is really hard. So I can help people with that. And I can prepare the animals for transition, letting them know when it's going to happen and inviting those already in spirit to come, whether it's human or non-human, to come and visit. I think they'll be there anyway, but I like to invite them. And then telling them things like, just step out of your body when you're ready. Um, I think it helps people, too, to relax and know that everything's going smoothly. So my book talks about that. It, we even talk about modalities that you can use beyond Western medicine, like 
acupressure, acupuncture, traditional Chinese medicine, massage, that might help your animal enjoy life a little bit longer. So I really wanted to give a roadmap to help people as their animals age. Yeah. Speaking yeah. about giving on your website, I see if people sign up for your newsletter, you get a free copy of five things your pets want you to know. Yeah. What's that about? I mean, it sounds obvious, but I'm assuming it's tools for living it, life now with your it's a, critter it's companion. A, actually, I think it's asking you to make some mind shift, mindset shifts, <laughs> like we will survive death. It's probably things that I maybe sound pretty like, well, duh, Mary Beth, you just told us about that. But, but to go into the different mindsets that they'd like you to know to to have a better relationship with them as if I was writing down taking notes from things I've learned so it's a easy read but it, it may help you take a different look at your relationship with your animals and bring you closer to them hey. Thank you for giving that away. That's at sacredgrove.com. Mary Beth, I've talked to a lot of mediums. And when somebody does a medium reading, they get feelings and thoughts, images, all of that. And they just have to trust that what comes out of their mouth, the recipient can take. And there's a feeling also, and I know because I've taken enough courses mm -hmm. that I actually at times feel like I'm the deceased person. There's memories that the Sandra doesn't have. There's new things that I thought these are not my experiences. So I have to get them out, right? And trust. And very often the person says, yeah, that, that's exactly true. Do you have that same feeling as far as animals go? Because we're never going to convince skeptics. And so we should never try, but do you, you have that feeling that you're seeing and experiencing life sometimes through the animal's perspective. Like you've got that knowing that nobody can take away from you. I do. Um, and it helps that when I get the confirmation, I got to say, at first it was like, holy cow, I, I had no idea. But then when I get confirmation, I'm like, I, I finally relaxing into it. And what is nice is I can get I get a sense also for a lot of rescue, oh, excuse me, let's go adopted. I love the adopt, adopted versus rescue. Adopted animals, it, if their behaviors come from something that happened before the people adopted them, we can. I can ask them what it was and get a, a certain feel. And it's not like a movie, but I, but I do get enough information where we can address it now. Uh, so even pre- living with the people they're living with. And then also during when I do medical intuition, I can feel in my body what's going on for them. Um, toothaches. I worked with a cat today who's teething and I could feel the pain and the headache. A little seventh month old cat, I believe. Um, and then, yes, when they pass, I do get some experiences about how things are for them or what they're up to. I now do trust. When somebody asked me what a dog who is still living was her favorite thing and what I came up with, and I wouldn't say the word because I thought this is ridiculous. I used a description of marshmallow and I said, oh, it's, it's kind of a, a white thing and it's really chewy and sweet. And she says, are you talking marshmallow? And I said, yes. She says, yeah, all my dog loves marshmallows. So you know, when that stuff happens, you start to say, okay, we're just going to say it and see where it lands. Yeah. Has anyone ever come to you with a missing pet? Yeah. That is really hard. It is not my specialty, but we ha I have had some luck with that, getting a sense for where they are. And also asking them to come home no matter what. Recently, one of my clients' cat went missing, and we asked him to make it home no matter what, just get his self home, because I felt like he was in really rough shape. And he did come back, and she knew, she just knew to go to the door. It was about two weeks later, but we kept asking, and the guy had a broken pelvis, and he still got himself home for her. And he's, 
he was not a young guy, but he is getting a lot of great treatment and he's back and she knows that he loves her. He can't, he wanted her to know he was. They're so intelligent. Yeah. There's a story from someplace I would attend uh, a big park and the people's cat got out of their motor home and they, for a long time stayed and then they drove a 1900 mile journey back home and it took a couple months but that cat found its way back home so there's intelligence you know there's guardian angels whatever you want to call that i do believe in miracles i believe anything's possible i do unfortunately we can't always save them physically but i a hundred percent believe through all the people that i've interviewed that they're Loved ones are there and also the animals as well. Last question for you. Have you ever had any crazy requests, like different kind of animals that you think, okay, I'll give it a try? Uh, or has it been pretty traditional? Well, I'm just trying to think. Who, who have we got? Well, of course, we've done birds. Birds are intelligent, long-lived. Guinea pigs, hamsters. You don't even think the little guys, but they definitely have... They have personalities as well. Not When I was training, I got to practice with gibbons and orangutans, which were in some sanctuaries. And that was, for me, that was amazing because the gibbon family, the husband, and I call them husband and wife because it felt like a husband, wife, and teenage daughter and a baby and the husband was really mad at her because he wanted to dis- discipline the teenager for acting out and the mother was trying to keep the uh, teenager from getting physical discipline and I thought, is that in the monkey family the gibbons yes it is okay. it's, it's the, the thank you well thank you for asking but i didn't think about there being that kind of family issues in the monkey family, but I stand corrected and I bow to their having just as many issues as we humans have in our relationships. That was my funniest one. I agree. You know, I do some bird watching now in the past few mm-hmm. years, and there's different kinds of birds that work together as family and they raise the young and all that. And there's got to be communication. There has to be all that just for the families to continue on. So I I think it's great. Mary Beth has been really special talking with you. Do you have any closing thoughts or words you want to give our listeners and viewers today? Let me see. We said so many good things together. Oh, Okay, lately it's been coming to me that I think our animals have been moving closer to us as a way to help us become more empathetic to to the rest of the world to because the empathy that we're starting to feel for those who've chosen to live with us in our homes I I think they're kind of hoping that we could start looking at other species with as much respect and love and that that would start to open us up to doing what needs to be done for the planet that's i just want to throw that's my latest weird thought is uh, it's not weird at all oh thank you i think it's really fantastic truly oh, yeah i animal lovers I think are some of the kindest, not self-centered, generous, loving people. You know, I've met some people who have never had a pet. And then they say, oh, it's just stupid, whatever. And I'm thinking, you can definitely tell (laughs) who's got that compassion and empathy. So they do get into your heart. And like I said, you think you're adopting them and saving them. I tell you what, they do the same for you. I have literally a place open in my heart that I didn't know existed. And that was during the time I had my cat Millie and and after she left this world. So yeah, yeah. So those are perfect, perfect words. Mary Beth, thank you so much for being our guest today. It's been wonderful. We got to talk about so many things that I 
I love sharing and I get to share them in a new way and much more deeper. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I love meeting new friends and finding out stories. And so I'm just thrilled that we got to connect. And for our listener or our viewer, you can go to Mary Beth's website, sacredgrove.com. See her services. Her book is there. Peace in Passing, Comfort for Loving humans during animal transitions. And also a reminder, my home base is we don't die.com. I now have a Patreon club and a shout out to our my Patreon friends there. If you want to donate as little as, do- as a dollar an episode, you get episodes before the rest of the world does. And you also get a full list between this show and my other show of 600 episodes about the afterlife. And I tell you, we talk about everything. So if there's an interest you have, I'm sure I have spoken about it. So there's lots of good things there. And you can, of course, you can cancel at any time. So just go to wedontdie.com. We also have our free Sunday gathering, 2 p.m. New York time every Sunday, medium demonstration included. It's extremely empowering. Each month we offer medium classes and specialty classes. If you're interested in my book, We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death, if you join my email list, it says you only get the first few chapters. The secret is I give you the entire book as a PDF. So that's at the bottom of the page at we don't die.com. Just fill in your name and your email address. And of course, you can unsubscribe, whatever you want. I try not to spam you or anything. But I want to say that it's always my pleasure to be your host here on We Don't Die Radio. My name is Sandra Champlain, and I do think that life is an education for the soul, that our lives here are very important. And we look at our furried and feathered and whatever kind of friends consider, whether it's now or in the future, adopting, and they'll rescue you. So I'll say that and put that out in the world. So I really want to thank you for listening or for watching, and we'll see you again soon.